In the last year, we have seen brutal winter weather, severe weather, and even tornadoes in the viewing area. News 18 meteorologist Amber Hardwick has a recap of some of the biggest weather events in 2014. Indiana is known for its ever-changing weather, and over the past year, we have had our fair share of brutally cold air and severe weather during the summer. Let's rewind to January 5th, when a strong storm system dumped 8 to 11 inches of snow in Tippecanoe County, and even more around Crawfordsville and Frankfurt. Not only was there a large amount of snow, but frigid temperatures dropping nearly 15 below zero. Factor in the wind, temperatures felt like they were around negative 45 degrees. It brought problems for drivers on roads and prompted emergency personnel to issue travel watches and warnings. It restricted people from traveling because of the poor road conditions. If it's windy and the, the snow is of a consistency that will will drift, that is a huge issue uh, for all the crews. So we, we weigh a lot of factors before we pull that trigger. And the harsh winter continued as multiple storm systems rolled through the state. At the Purdue airport, the air temperature dropped below zero 18 times. About 60 65 inches of snow fell in West Lafayette in the 2013-14 season and is marked as the second snowiest winter in history. The record was set in 1884-85 season with 66 and a half inches of snow. This winter resulted in cities having to pay a large amount of money in overtime for crews plowing the roads. A lot of that was fuel costs, of course, and overtime because last year most of our storms came in right before the weekend. So we had to work Saturdays and Sundays. The extended period of below freezing temperatures froze rivers and caused ice jams to form in February. On the 20th, temperatures warmed up and ice on area rivers began melting. A line of severe thunderstorms rolled through the region that day. The storms produced damaging straight line winds, an EF0 tornado near Crawfordsville, and brought excess rainfall to the area. Warmer temperatures and rain was not a good combination for the ice jam situation. Flooding quickly became a problem. Problem, especially for those who live near the rivers. One jam on the Wildcat Creek prompted nearly 20 residents living along Barton Beach Road in Tippecanoe County to evacuate their homes. We were rescued by the Sheriff's Department and uh, they came down in the hovercraft boat and rescued us from the house. They, they carried us, they had to literally carry us from the house because the water was four feet deep at the back door. We've lived out here for about 30 years and I've seen three floods and nothing ever as bad as this. It's been unbelievable. A seven mile long ice jam in Carroll County also formed on the Wabash River at Lockport Bridge this winter and another two mile jam near Logansport on the Eel River. Right now with the amount of snow on the ground melting, it could it's probably about three inches of water on the ground that's in distant snow. Then you put another couple, three inches of rain on top of that along with the uh, the ground being frozen as hard as it is, there's nowhere for it to go. Jammed up and it broke a little bit. Water started flowing and with the rise of the river and everything, uh, when it jammed back up, all the water started coming up into the backyards. Through the summer, temperatures stayed mild. Last July became the coolest July on record in Indiana. There were only a handful of days with highs in the 90s, but at the Purdue Airport, there was only one day the temperature exceeded 90 degrees. That day was September 5th. Severe weather also was limited this year, but the area still saw its fair share of damaging winds, large hail, and two confirmed tornadoes, including the tornado in Crawfordsville and an EF1 near DeMott on June 30th. Many probably recall the severe weather delay at the Taste of Tippecanoe. There was confusion amongst those at the Taste, but festivities were able to resume when the severe threat ended. We just kept everybody informed. We kept everybody safe, and that was that was the whole point. Frequent rainfall and cold temperatures brought problems for area farmers in the fall. The excess rain left fields too muddy for farming equipment to harvest crops. I just had a phone call for I come, and this guy said he hopes that he's done by January 1. So we're a long ways away in some places in this part of the United States of being done. It will be a memorable weather year for many as we remember the excess snow and sub-zero temperatures from the start. We only hope history doesn't repeat itself, but Indiana weather will always find a way to surprise us each year. The newsroom and weather department at WLFI would like to thank the viewers for all the weather reports and pictures we received this last year. Amber Hardwick, News 18.